Hello. Hi, so um, I'm a PhD student doing astrophysics. I'm also a massive nerd. So one thing I do is watch a lot of science fiction. May the 4th, thought I'd talk about that. One thing we see a lot in science fiction is time travel. It comes up again and again and again, maybe as if people are repeating things. But one thing that always happens every time is they have to explain it. They have to explain what happens if you go back and touch yourself? What happens if you prevent your own birth? What happens if that butterfly flaps its wings? Should we be worried? The reason they have to do this is nobody ever has like a set version of how this all works. I'm behind time already. Uh, so I've come up with a system of categorizing the way time travel works in film. It has three categories. I'm going to explain them to you now. I'm going to give examples. And then I'm going to tell you how time travel works in reality and what we think about that. Uh, I've made some diagrams. They are very simple. The ones on the left are time as seen by normal people. The ones on the right are time as seen by time travelers. This is the first category, which I'm going to have to explain very quickly because I've run out of time. Uh, <laughs> if you travel from point B to point A, moving back forward through time, in this sort of timeline, you overwrite everything after point A. And that includes what you see as your past. So this produces a paradox. You can prevent your own birth and erase yourself from existence, just like... Marty McFly and Back to the Future. Excellent, that was on time. Uh, this is very dangerous. Paradoxes could dissolve the universe, so try and avoid doing that. Type number two is what I'm terming the static timeline. And it works almost the same, except that you can't change anything. The effects of your time travel are already included. So if you go back in time and try and prevent your parents from meeting, you're just going to end up causing it because everything will play out exactly the same, time, uh, exactly the same way this time around. So now if our little time-traveling stick figure travels back in time, he doesn't create a new future. The timeline stays exactly as it was, and he can travel back forward through time to get back to the point he left with no ill effects whatsoever. Classic example of this one is... Now I'm ahead of time. Excellent. Harry Potter. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Sorry, spoilers incoming. At the end of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, Harry and Hermione travel back through time and try to change the way that things have happened. The thing is, they've already happened that way. Harry throws a rock through a window, but he only does this because he recognizes the rock that hit him on the head beforehand. He casts a Patronus at the lake because he's at the lake trying to find the guy who cast a Patronus before. The effects of time travel have already been included, so if you try and change anything, you just cause it. Type number three is probably the most realistic in terms of what we actually know about science, and that's what's called a multiverse. So you travel back in time, you change something, but in doing so, you create a new parallel timeline to the one you left. Your old timeline continues to exist, so you avoid the whole paradox problem. You can't erase yourself from existence because everything that happened before still happened, but you have a new timeline to travel forward on that has all of the effects of whatever it was you tried to change. And the best example I could come up with this, at least the most recent, is the new Star Trek movie. Well, the last but one new Star Trek movie where Spock travels back in time and creates a whole new timeline where Kirk isn't captain of the Enterprise and some stuff happens. It was a bit silly anyway, but example of time travel. Uh, also, Stargate, uh, Stargate SG-1, Atlantis and Fringe do it the same way. There are a bunch more examples than the ones I've got here. Also, I may have miscategorized some things, so come and argue with me afterwards if you think I have. So that's my very simple system. Now onto the actual science. Is time travel even possible? Maybe. Um, some solutions to general relativity have what are called closed time-like curves, where you can pass back through them and reach the same point. Only some solutions. Nobody's sure what the true solutions are, and when quantum gravity shows up, it may solve the whole thing. We don't know. Can you create universe-destroying paradoxes? Well, in any universe where time travel is possible, it's possible by accident. It can happen in nature. And the universe is very, very big, and it's very, very old, so it would already have happened, so we should have already had a paradox, and the universe should have been destroyed. So since the universe exists, it probably isn't possible to have paradoxes. Do we live in a multiverse? Well, I mentioned quantum mechanics before. One interpretation of quantum mechanics says every action creates a, an alternate reality in which the other thing happened. That would kind of imply the whole multiverse thing could be right. So maybe. Which fictional reality gets the closest to what we know about time travel? Doctor Who has tried everything. Every one of those categories I mentioned before, Doctor Who's done at least one episode that fits in. Usually episodes fit into two of those categories. So, in conclusion, the only thing we can say about time is it's probably a big ball of wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff. Thank you very much.